if you like tile laying game, you might want to look at this one, Pastelli, coming up. Hi, it's Tarrant. And Stella from Nippon University. Today we are going to talk about Pastelli. Do I say it right? I'm not Pastelli? sure. Pastelli? Pastelli. Pastelli. Yeah. Originally, this is the uh, analog lunchbox edition, which yeah. is, I believe, uh, a Japanese game. Mm -hmm. But it got brought in by a couple of different companies, I think Panasaurus and Simon. Yep. Yeah. So, we are going to start with the overview of the game, and then we'll come back and we'll show you what we think of it. So Pass Tally is a tile laying and fast changing root building game. Uh, it's an abstract game. It's got these um, pastel colors, which hence the confusion about how you pronounce the uh, title of the game. Could be. <laughs> and it's, there aren't very many rules. Basically you have two actions per turn and you're trying to link your colored dots up on the board. And your actions can be either to place a tile somewhere onto the board or to move one of your tokens up to two spaces around the board skipping over any steps that have another player's token. Uh, this game plays two to three players so it doesn't get too complicated and uh, busy on the board. Then once you're done with your turn uh, you score. You score. You find any dots that are connected of yours. Of yours. So you could have two pairs or you could have one. And then you run through and you count the total number of passes. And a pass is any time you enter a tile, you score a number of passes equal to the height of that tile. And so as it's laid out here, this purple tile... Let's say it's here. Say it's like that. Uh, this purple connector here would go through one, two tiles, each at a height of one. So that counts as two passes. You then refer to this table and score the number of victory points that equals two passes. So here it would be two points. And then you add more tiles later on as long as there are already um, two tiles in there. Like so, for example. Yes. So you can always place a tile uh, on top, not on fully on top of... You couldn't place a tile like this. It has to be placed so that it's uh, on two separate tiles mm -hmm. that are on the same level. And so if you're doing that and you're playing purple, if this were if we'd skipped orange's turn and that was purple's purple placed that tile and slid that there, then for example, you would score one, two, three, four, five, six, total of six passes. Because each of these two connections goes through a level one and a level two um, tile. So there's always and once again six would be three victory points. And there's always three tiles available. Yep. And um, whenever one of these um, em is empty, then, then everyone gets one more turn and then it's finished. Or if oh, everything's empty and then that triggers immediately the, ge the end of the game. Yep. This is actually, um, this is quite cute. This, the first time I saw it, what is this? So this is actually height measuring of tiles. So Hi these tiles, yeah, these tiles are really nice quality. It's really thick here. Yeah. Very thick components, some of the mm -hmm. thickest I think I've seen, which really helps for a game this, like yes. this where measuring the elevation. A bit like Eagle Griffin games, let's say they're sort of like that thickness That game. sort of thickness, yes. Yeah. Um, this game, so it, it, your whole, when, when you've got two actions, it's a very well balanced, um, it's got that action point allowance thing where you've got usually one fewer action than you want to achieve everything you're trying to do. I always find that's a good measure of a of an action point allowance game because yeah usually you want to break your opponent's really long loop that's scoring oh, yeah. them like 30 passes and also put Help one more yourself. tile in and move one of your pieces and it it's frustrating in that way mm -hmm. but it works that's what you want a game where the action points are just almost enough to achieve what you want but to force difficult choices you probably like this sort of game with two players as well as it's directly either helps you or kind of like block your opponents from achieving their objective yeah it's a bit more direct in two player because you can certainly see where an opponent uh, is getting a lot of points and then like break it oh yeah 
there's definitely strategy with um, placing, like often, yeah, you can place a tile, another one can just get put on top of it straight afterwards and, um, and give it back. So there's definitely something in making sure you're not leaving too many places where there's uh, matching heights next to each other. Oh yeah, and then because that way it's hard right. for them, hard for that to be broken. I didn't realize that until I started playing. Oh yeah, don't let's not leave it open for Taryn to do. Yeah. So for me, it is really nice. I like games with simple rules where you can just focus on the strategy at times. So this is one of those. I would say it is a filler for us because we play a lot of complex games. Mm -hmm. However, so the only thing that I think, and this is only because of me, this has got a lot of special elements with rotating specially. So yeah. this makes my brain like really works like extra hard. And it takes yeah. me a while to try to um, put things together. So it could be a little bit of AP. Sorry, Tarrant. Yeah, this is, it's something that we struggle with when we're playing tile placement mm -hmm. games with a lot of rotation because rotating images in your head is something that not everyone can do very well. Yeah. It's one of those things Most that some can brains... Do it, I think. Yeah, it's just it's yeah. one of those things that some brains just aren't uh, coded it, for. It's, yeah, it's so it's so funny. I wish I could because I still enjoy it. However, if it, it is up to you again, I know that I've played games like you know, with a lot of special rotation. I think it was photosynthesis. I was struggling because to image. Yeah, that a was lot like, of this I can still it. manage because I can still just grab the tile and then kind of like try to put it here or just and then I just like uh oh, which way it goes and that sort of thing. So that really helps a lot. Um and it's only a small sort of like capacity rather than like a massive more massive like photosynthesis and yeah. moving around. So yeah. Yep. Um the game also Game comes with a timer. That's that's um, what I just talking so about. So you can put the pressure on the game, 60 seconds per turn, mm -hmm. uh, if you want, because it definitely, even even if you can rotate happily that's in your right. mind, it can definitely uh, be AP inducing. Mm -hmm. I think one of the other things in this game, as you said, it ends when a stack of tiles is gone or when there's no legal placement or when someone reaches 50. So it's kind of a race to 50. Um, it's got a bit of a drop it feel in that the points are only going to get higher and higher as the game goes on That's right. because more and more tiles come on the board. So even if things aren't going so well early, you can make that up as, as you go along later, which for a, mm. for a game of this sort of filler level, um, kind of like drop it. That, that's quite nice, and it means... Catch-up mechanics sort yeah, of thing. It's got yeah, a, it's got an automatic catch-up where your last couple of rounds can make up the difference. And I, I like that in a filler like this because it means there's not going to be a runaway winner. winner. Um, it was pretty close. I mean, it's closer than I thought at the end when we played. Of course, Tarrant wins because you're really good at... It was only about three points, I think. It? it was pretty close. Okay. Um, so that, I mean, that pretty much covers it. These brightly colored pieces, um, yeah, as I say, it, it is very much abstract, but it brings these nice colors in, building roots and tracing them around the board. It's all kind of fun. It's nice, for sure. So, should you play? You decide for yourself. It will help us if you can smash that like button and subscribe to us if you haven't already done so. We do a lot of videos like this one, how to play, play through and so on. And um, subscribe to us if you haven't already done so. Also, we are on social media. I'm on Instagram, Twitter and so on. Hopefully, I'll see you there too. Hopefully, I'll see you next time. Bye.